China's taken the axe to import tariffs once again. From November 1st, Beijing said it would cut the cost of bringing in almost 1,600 products, ranging from seafood to electronics. Economists say it will no doubt soften the blow of hefty US tariffs on Chinese goods. But the decision also sends a political message. China needs trade allies. And by doing this, they actually earn allies except for US, of course. Beijing cut import tariffs on almost 1,500 consumer products in July as part of efforts to open up the economy. But since then, growth has slowed. Last quarter's GDP figures showed the economy grew 6.5%, its weakest pace since the global financial crisis in 2008. That's been felt by many in China, including European businesses who welcome any reduced rates. For our companies manufacturing in China, it means that they get access to cheaper input materials in their supply chains. So it, it's all good news. China signalled it would continue to lower import tariffs on some goods at the World Economic Forum in September. The finance ministry confirmed duties on products like textiles and metals would be cut from 11.5% to 8.4% from November, along with lowered import tariffs on wood, minerals and gemstones. I think there is more now a, a realisation that for China to be able to reach its goals, it needs to have access to the best input, um, both raw materials, uh, but above all components. And I think we will see a continued lowering of tariffs also from that perspective. Imported medicine is also on the latest list. That's good news for patients in China where drugs can be expensive. I think the cut is also echoing to the public opinion that there, there should be some medicine cuts, uh, medicine cost cuts in, for example, for, for cancers. So this is actually a very good step for local consumption. And that's partly what this is all about. China has a huge middle class of three to four hundred million people and a slowing economy could mean less spending. So any way to lower costs for consumers and companies is seen by the government as a step in the right direction. Beijing's already unveiled measures to help ward off a sharp downturn in the economy, like cutting costs and taxes. Just this week, it announced it'll take more steps like stabilising employment, foreign trade and investment. China's hoping all of this is enough to boost business conditions before the trade war with the US really starts to bite. Samantha Vardis, TRT World, Beijing. Well, TRT World's editor at Raj, Craig Capetus, joins me now from Paris. Hi, Craig. What do you think is the real reason behind China slashing its tariffs? Is it about opening up its economy or is it more about uh, boosting domestic spending in order to avert the slowdown? Chinese President Xi has woken up and smelled the chaos. <laughs> uh, he, you know, he uh, opening up the Chinese economy assuages President Donald Trump while at the same time it gives uh, President Xi the juice he needs to uh, ramp up domestic spending to avert a slowdown. The uh, celebrated economist and musician John Lennon called this instant karma. And it's going to get you and it's going to knock you right off your feet. And that's what we saw today. Interesting. As well as the latest tariff cuts, Beijing also says that it wants to uh, speed up its plans to remove caps on foreign ownership in Chinese financial institutions. We know China's financial sector is one of the most uh, protected in the world. So that looks like it's another sign of the economy opening up. Are, are these moves the result of Donald Trump's brinkmanship, his hard stance on China? Well, we must admit, you betcha it does. Look, remember, it's not just the United States and the Trumpies who believe China has rigged the uh, World Trade Organization game. Uh, the European Union believes it. A lot of other global leaders believe it. And uh, they're tired of wallowing in the toxic soup of, of Chinese trade policy. Now, there's no doubt that Trump is the uh, loudmouth at the table here. And uh, just perhaps uh, all of his yelling and screaming uh, may have accomplished something. 
And I, I just want to uh, bring up a tweet that Donald Trump has written in the last few hours. So he says, uh, just had a long and very good conversation with President Xi Jinping of China. We talked about many subjects with a heavy emphasis on trade. Those discussions are moving along nicely with meetings being scheduled at the G20 in Argentina. So this seems to confirm the speculation that the two leaders will get together on the sidelines of the G20 to discuss trade. Do you think they'll avert or, or ease the trade war that's currently happening in between them? I think there's a good ch chance because the G20 happens after the midterm elections and trade will no longer be a powerful political cudgel uh, for Trump's base. Uh, I believe they're going to be tangoing in Buenos Aires between November 26 and December 1st. Um, uh, the, the, the G20 should be quite the musical extravaganza this year. Uh, but I, I think there's a little caveat emptor here in that the cascade effect of the trade war, you know, it really doesn't signal the end of the world, as a lot of people have been prophesizing, but it does signal the end of a lifestyle. Uh, the uh, We were talking about this yesterday, and, and that is the transference of jobs from one country to another. We're already yes. seeing downsizing in some American corporations, and that, and that looks to continue. So um, what, what's going on here is I think both sides have, have realized that their unilateral positions, their nativist positions, are in fact inextricably linked, and they better do something about it. Okay, we'll see what happens at the G20 later this month. Craig Kapitas in Paris, thank you as always.